So you're probably aware that steel is stronger than aluminum, and aluminum is lighter than steel. And you probably have heard the commonly held belief that aluminum has a better strength to weight ratio than steel. Now this is true for some alloys of aluminum and alloys of steel, but it's not a true blanket statement. There are some alloys of steel that are so strong that they beat the pants off of aluminum even when you take their weight into account. Now working in aerospace, I deal with all different kinds of alloys. I've worked with titanium, Inconel, and yes, a whole bunch of aluminum. And I really hate the aluminum. Aluminum is like the butter of metals. Maybe that's a little harsh. It's like cheap pine. You know, it's easy to work. You can cut it into the shapes you want and make precise geometries, but it's not structural. It's gonna bend under load. It's not gonna hold up to long-term wear. Yes, there are some harder alloys of aluminum, which are the ones you would actually use in structural parts in aerospace, but those are gonna be as expensive as the really high-grade steels. Now, I've learned my lesson from the Hexagon videos. I have a bunch of samples of different alloys of steel and aluminum, and we're gonna compare them so that I can actually back up the claims I'm making. Obviously, if I just came in here and told you that aluminum was trash, no one would actually believe me. I mean, people still might not believe me even with the tests. But what we're looking at here is two different types of aluminum and two different types of steel. Now, I've actually used all four of these alloys at work, so I'm gonna start from the bottom up and walk you through my design philosophy and when I would use each of them. For context, I'm a test engineer, so most of the things I'm designing are actually test fixtures rather than flight hardware. But that's enough for now. Let's start with the worst. This is 6061. Now I actually do use this a fair amount because it is cheap and light and readily available. Not every test fixture is gonna see a lot of structural loading, so sometimes you just need something to fill the space. That's what this is. Now, this being our first sample, it seems like as good a time as any to explain the test we're gonna do. The gold standard would be to mill a groove in this of smaller diameter, very precisely measured, and then pull it in tension until it breaks. This gives you a very clean stress strain curve. It correlates directly to von Mises stress, but I don't actually have any equipment that can pull and break this let alone measure it. My current load cells can't go over about 600 pounds. So by having a relatively long piece of metal and putting it in bending where it's at its weakest, I should be able to break all four of these without going over 600 pounds. The stock size I ended up with is a quarter inch by six inches because that's one that had all four of the alloys I need. All right, so there's nothing to it but to put some final touches on my fixture, throw this in the press and crush it. This test fixture is brought to you by JLC PCB, or more specifically, JLC 3DP, which is their 3D printing service. JLC 3DP reached out and offered to help me with one of my projects, and it was perfect timing for this test. I have access to some basic FEM printers, but for advanced materials and ultimate quality, I have to go out of house. In particular, I took advantage of JLC 3DP's high strength nylon and stainless steel printing. I modeled these brackets to hold three pins, which will be the three contact points for our bend test. The two bottom brackets brackets were printed in nylon, and the center one was printed in steel because it will see twice the load. Also because 3D printing in steel is awesome. Now yes, these could have been machined, JLC offers that as a service as well, but I was interested in testing out the quality of the printing because it opens up a lot of possibilities. Also it meant that I could embed my logo in the parts and see how well it handled fine details. And I have to say I am extremely impressed with the way it came out. The logo is perfectly clear, even the thin line and this narrow gap in the H and the stainless steel piece was very solid. I drilled and tapped a pilot hole for a set screw, and if I didn't know better, I would have assumed that this was machined from a solid piece of 316. I can highly recommend their services for your next project, and I'm certainly planning on using them again in the future. For more information on manufacturing your parts with JLC 3DP, or their CNC or PCB making services, check out the link in the description. Now, back to finishing the test fixture. The two nylon brackets go on a wooden frame. The only purpose of this frame is to keep them at a fixed distance apart. I'm gonna track displacement by putting marks on the pins, so if this wooden frame compresses a little bit, that won't affect my measurements. Now the center bracket is gonna use a proper hardened dowel pin, but the two outside pins, which will see half the load, were just made from aluminum. This also meant I could turn a groove into them, which will hold the sample in place and prevent slipping. And with that all set up, it's time to test it out by bending the 6061. Oh, 
All right, so I don't know what the results of that test were yet. Uh, I'm sure they're up here, but let's say that that aluminum isn't strong enough. You need something that's a bit more structural. The next step I would take is actually to go straight to steel. This is 4140. It is a cheap but relatively strong steel. I forget what the exact alloy is of like hardware store steel, but it's going to be weaker than this. This is an alloy steel. It is hardenable and in this state it is actually hardened. Uh, the master sheet does not tell me what the hardness is, but uh, yes, this is not in its weakest state. When I have a part that is going to see some serious loading, I usually just go straight for this. Now this does have the downside that it will rust. I'm handling this in my hand right now. If I was to leave it out for a couple days, you're going to see my fingerprints all over it. If you're going to have your fixture around for a long time, you're either going to have to scotch break that rust off or coat it. All right, let's say you looked at 4140, but it's not quite strong enough, or you're really worried about that rusting thing and you want your fixture to stick around for a long time. This is, hey, it's me again from the future, just jumping in here because I didn't do a great job explaining what's going on here, especially because I hadn't seen the data yet. So yeah, our next material is gonna be 174, which is a high strength stainless steel. This is my most used material by far, but I'm sort of giving the impression that stainless steels are stronger than alloy steels, which is not true. It is between these two samples, but that's not the whole story. So let's just fast forward, show the 17.4 test, and then we can compare that to the 4140. You see, it significantly outperformed it much more than I would have expected. See, when I looked up the part number for the 4140 I bought, it turns out it's actually annealed which means it's about half the strength I expected. The 4140 I usually buy has a yield strength of around 120 KSI. But even then, 120 KSI yield strength is on the low end of what you can get for a quenched and tempered 4140. You can realistically get it up to about 180 KSI, maybe 200 for really hard thin sections. So while yes, the available stock for 4140 is often weaker than H917-4, which is about 170 KSI, that's only if you don't heat treat your parts. I typically don't because I'm making one-off test fixtures and one-time heat treatment and plating or coating for that matter is extremely expensive and adds a lot of lead time. 17.4 is available in its strongest temper in a wide variety of sizes. It's gonna arrive already hardened and because it's stainless, you don't have to worry about corrosion. And of course, for most of the parts I'm making, it has more than enough strength. For me, the benefit of alloy steels is mostly that they're cheaper. But in some rare cases, the fact that they have the capacity to be stronger is also useful. I've made a single test fixture this way because it was seeing extremely high loads in a relatively small part, so we made it from 300M. That's another low alloy steel which can be heat treated to the high 200s, maybe 300 KSI if you're really pushing it. And because steel is steel, it's going to have the same density as annealed 4140 or 17.4 for that matter, but because you can get double the yield strength, it's gonna have a much higher strength to weight ratio. All right, but that leaves one more sample. This is another type of aluminum that I kind of skipped over. It's 7075. 7075 is what's gonna give the steel a run for its money. This is used a lot for flight parts. The two times I've personally used it, one was because I was trying to replicate an interface that's on the actual flight hardware. The second fixture I made with this was actually a large frame that I'm gonna have to carry up and down the stairs, so I didn't wanna make it out of steel. Now this stuff is more expensive, it's much more comparable to the nice 17.4 stainless than it is to the 4140. Now what I'm really interested to see is how this compares to the stainless steel in a bend test. On paper, this has a higher strength to weight ratio than 17.4, just barely but that's assuming a pure tensile test. In a bending test, if this was the same mass as the 17.4, it would be much thicker, which would increase its stiffness and resistance to bending. But as is, all of these samples have a fixed cross-section, meaning it doesn't actually get that advantage.
So you've already seen how the steels compare, now let's see how they stack up against aluminum. So first off we can see that the steel is significantly stiffer. At the beginning of the plot it's linear, this is called the elastic region, it's where the material is deflecting but not permanently deforming. The slope for the steel is significantly steeper which indicates that it is taking more force to displace at the same distance, which makes sense, steel should be more stiff. This also highlights the fact that stiffness is independent of hardness and, for that matter, alloy, because both of the steels start with the same slope and so do both of the aluminum alloys. What changes is the point where we start to see permanent deformation, known as yielding. I calculated yield strength using a 0.2% strain offset. In other words, I took that linear slope line, shifted it to the right a little, and the point where it crosses the graph is where it's yielding. And based on that, I got the following yield strengths. 6061 yielded at 431 newtons, 7075 yielded at 683, 4140 yielded at 699, and 174 yielded at 1694 newtons. So yeah, I wasn't kidding when I said the 7075 was going to give the steel run for its money. It pretty much matched the 4140. Now, like I mentioned, that's annealed 4140, not quenched and tempered. But again, it is performing pretty well. But to answer the core question of this video, we actually need to divide those yield strengths by the weight of each sample in newtons. And unfortunately, it looks like 7075 has proven me wrong, beating out 17.4 in terms of strength weight ratio by roughly 14%. But hold on a minute, we've already talked about how 17.4 is not the strongest steel available. It's just something I use a lot because it's a good compromise between strength, corrosion resistance, and cost. Again, there are steels out there that are easily twice as strong as 17.4. 7075, on the other hand, is near the upper limit for what you can get with aluminum. This is a T6 temper, it should be around 73 KSI. If you get some really exotic stuff like 7068, you can get a little higher just breaking 100 KSI. But again, that's just not coming anywhere near the high-end alloy steels. Now I know people aren't gonna be super happy that I didn't test a stronger alloy steel. I'm not super happy about it, but it would mean I would have to test something like this. This is M2 tool steel. Tool steel or high-speed steel is a family of alloys specifically made for making cutting tools like end mills or turning tools for a lathe, this specific sample should have a yield strength of around 261 KSI. That's great, it means this would probably yield around 2600 newtons and have a strength to weight ratio of about, you know, 6800 to 1, but 2600 newtons is 580 pounds. Hang on, that's not actually much more than I did in my last video, which was about 550 pounds. Maybe I could do this. Give me a second. I do want to take some extra precautions here. This is significantly harder and more likely to break when I bend it. Also, it may permanently damage my scale, but if anything, that just shows the true power of steel. So let's take a look at the data. Unsurprisingly, the M2 tool steel is the strongest thing we've tested so far. It starts off following the same slope as the rest of the steel. It's a little wavier. I set my camera up a little further away and I think there was more noise in the displacement data because of that. But we can still tell that it's yielding around 2400 newtons and breaking around 2500 newtons. But what we really care about is the strength to weight ratio. As a reminder, here are the ratios for the materials we've tested so far and 7075 is currently in the lead with 5,109. But if we add the M2 tool steel in, you can see that it readily beats the 7075 with a ratio of 6,377 to one. So what did we learn? Well, steel absolutely can have a higher strength weight ratio than aluminum, especially aerospace grade 6061. Now, yes, the higher grades of aluminum are more competitive, but if you go for an ultra high strength, ultra hard alloy steel, it's always gonna win. Also, I haven't even talked about environments yet. If you even go up a couple hundred degrees, the strength of aluminum goes off a cliff, steel is gonna be stronger for much higher temperatures. But of course, we don't see planes or you know large structures and rockets being built out of M2 tool steel, so what's going on? Well, the hardness of the steel is one of its weaknesses. The M2 tool steel shattered when I bent it, instead of bending and deforming and absorbing the energy like softer steel or aluminum. If your airplane hits a bird, you want this to happen, not this. Also, another problem from making thinner sheets of steel is that they become more prone to buckling. 
this would affect aluminum less because the same mass of aluminum would be thicker, giving it a higher mass moment of inertia, in other words, more resistance to bending. Where the alloy steels really shine and where they're used most in aerospace is in small regions of highly concentrated stress, most commonly fasteners. Bolts, and especially threads, are small regions that can see very high loading, so they really benefit from the additional strength but they also don't suffer all of the same downsides that come from using hardened steel. Fasteners are made by the thousands, so the cost of heat treatment and plating goes way down, giving us tons of off-the-shelf options for high-strength alloy steel parts, or if you want enhanced corrosion resistance, there's a bunch of stainless steel fasteners as well. Also, there is one huge advantage of steel that I want to talk about, which is its fatigue resistance. You've probably heard of metal fatigue. It's the idea that if you take material to, say, half of its yield strength, it's not going to bend, but if you do it thousands and thousands of times, it's going to crack, degrade, and eventually break. Aluminum is very susceptible to metal fatigue, but steel, on the other hand, has a secret superpower. If you keep the stress low enough, steel will not fatigue. It will last forever. This is a huge advantage, especially for high vibration environments and things like industrial equipment. If you overbuild things out of steel to keep that stress low, they will not fatigue, they will last forever. Aluminum cannot do that. So while yes, I will begrudgingly admit that there is a time and a place to use aluminum, I obviously do not agree with the idea that it's as simple as aluminum having a better strength to weight ratio. I'm kind of happy, and I'll see you in the next video.